Welcome to the PBA League 2018 version, live from Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. The Elias Cup is the prize where crazy meets competition. Some of the finest on the PBA Tour get together every year in Portland for PBA League. And it's serious, but it's serious fun. See the emotion and the crazy get together for the PBA League. Where else could we be with this kind of atmosphere than Bayside Bowl? Welcome to the Ocean View and Falmouth PBA League Elias Cup Championships. The rooftop bar is open. They've been tailgating for hours, and they're ready. This is the atmosphere the PBA League has every time we come to Bayside Bowl. Remarkable. They're dressed, they're ready, and so are some of the finest players in the PBA Tour. We have today the number one seeds, the LA Lex with Jason Belmonte and EJ Tackett of the Motown Muscle to be followed by the Brooklyn Styles and the powerful Silver Lake Adam Splitters. Next week, you'll see the WTT Kingpins and the two-time defending champion Dallas Strikers. They're a seventh seed. And then three versus six, Philadelphia Hitman versus the Portland Lumberjacks, a rematch from a wild one a year ago. Hello again, everybody, with the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler. I'm Dave Lamont, and we thank you for joining us. First, we turn our thoughts to Dallas back-to-back -back titles what do you think their chances are for repeating well I'll tell you what anytime you have Norm Duke Bill O'Neill and Tommy Jones on the same team you gotta like their chances Norm Duke was so clutch last year remember it was just two years ago when they bowled a perfect 300 game O'Neill was clutch and then Tommy Jones in the anchor position seemed like he always came through but Dave the one wild card for me was their last pick in the draft and that was Kyle Sherman Norm Duke surprised everybody in the building, including his own teammates, with that pick. And we look at the number one seed in this opening match, LAX. This is the team that had no changes from last year, the only one to do so. And they have no they don't have any secret weapons. They have weapons. Yeah, they really do. And starting off with the reigning player of the year, the best bowler on the planet, in Jason Belmonte. This is the all-international team plus one with Stu Williams, Osku Palermo, Martin Larson, and then throw one of the best left-handers on tour in Jacob Buttruff in the mix. And oh, by the way, a little birdie told me that Jacob Buttruff is going to bowl anchor for that team. Interesting decision. Belmo not at the anchor. And now let's meet the lineup for the number eight seed, the Barbershaw Motown Muscle. Leading off from Gilbert, Arizona, three-time PBA titleist Josh Blanchard. In the number two position, from Fukuoka, Japan, a 16-time JPBA titleist, the number two pick in the draft, Shota Kawazoe. In the number three spot, from Quebec City, Quebec, Canada, the 2016 U.S. Open champion and a three-time titleist, Francois Lebois. In the number four spot from Austin, Texas, one major championship and three titles, Anthony Simonson. And in the anchor position from Huntington, Indiana, the 2016 Player of the Year, nine-time titleist, E.J. Tackett. And the manager is both a USBC and PBA Hall of Famer, one of the all-time greats, Del Beller Jr. <laughs> and now let's meet the number one seed, BowlingBall.com, LAX. Leading off from Ellsworthport, Cheshire, England, Six-time European PBA titleist, one on the PBA Tour, Stu Williams. And the 
number two position. From Gothenburg, Sweden, eight European titles, Martin Larson. Number three from Espoo, Finland, a five-time titleist and owner of a major, Osku Palermo. In the number four position from Orange, New South Wales, Australia, 17-time titleist, the owner of nine majors, Jason Belmonte. The Anchorman from Chandler, Arizona, winner of three titles and 14 regionals, Jacob Buttress. And the manager, owner of two regional titles, Andrew Kane. Well, be well, because of the unique talent we have here, we have the opportunity for Kimberly Pressler to talk to the last two PBA Players of the Year. They're standing by with her right now. Guys, it is so good to be back at Bayside, and I'm standing here with the franchise players down on the floor. Listen to this crowd. It's all about the teams here and this crowd. So, Jason, you guys have both bowled around the world in some pretty amazing places. But what is it about this place that makes it so unique and so fun to be at? Honestly, it's the uniqueness of the crowd. You know, these guys love bowling. They show it. They, they let us hear it. We feed off of them, and they, uh, you know, they really make this event what it is today. So all the guys down here in Portland, thank you so much. All right, Jason, thank you, and good luck to your team. Now, EJ, uh, it's all fun here. You guys have a blast, and we can totally see that, and the crowd loves having you here. But it's not just about having fun, is it? No, uh, we're, we're chasing that elusive Elias Cup. Uh, our team hasn't got there yet, but uh, I have a really good feeling about this year, and uh, we're going to get against one of the toughest teams on the block, so if we can get through this team, anything can happen. All right, well, we wish you the best of luck. It looks like the players are ready, and this crowd is ready. Let's get to bowling. All right, let's take a look at our format here, Randy, because this is, again, very unique. The Baker format, this is all team. And it's best of two, so if you go 2-0, oh, you're moving on. If you split, we get the one ball roll off. And, and what's unique about this year's event is that it's Baker bowling throughout. So here's the qualifying. They went eight games on the other side of the house here at Bayside, and LAX ended up on top. So that's how these were all, and this is very close, by the way. It started out with these teams just changing leads all the time before Belmonte and LAX finally got going. And 234 average in Baker is pretty strong. And this side of the house tends to be higher scoring. However, I understand we have brand new bowling pins. Right out of the box today. And Stu Williams going to leave behind a little extra work on the first ball. And not surprising to be a little pumped up in this environment and give it a little extra gas in shot number one. So hard to say. Like yeah, you see where shots. Stu has a genuine world figure in the sport of bowling. Had a pretty good run at the USBC Masters. Led the tournament actually for a couple of days. And no trouble with that conversion. So with Baker, the leadoff bowler will now bowl again in the sixth frame. If you bowl the second, you bowl the seventh. You bowl the third, the eighth, the fourth, the ninth, and the anchor bowls the fifth and tenth. We say hello to Josh Blanchard. And we say hello to our first strike. Randy, what are we bowling on here? 42 feet, the Mark Roth pattern. And you're going to see multiple angles of Stu Williams playing a little bit in. Josh Blanchard using your thing and going much straighter to the pocket. And speaking of Mark Roth, the man himself is here. We have the Mark Roth MVP award that will be presented. Take a look at Martin Larson. Come on! Got to hurry? It did. 
but just a bit soft. Now you mentioned the brand new pins, and you can kind of see that. We'll watch it throughout the competition. Those bottoms are perfectly flat, a little bit harder to knock down. So Larson, he's battled uh, some injuries a little bit this year, yeah. but has come back. Also had a good USBC pass. There was and he hangs on there. It looked like he was a touch worried when he first threw it. So now number two here for the Motown Muscle, Shota Kawazoe. We saw him in Indianapolis. Had the match in his hand, his second match, after defeating Matt Sanders, and it didn't work out. Say goodbye to that nine pin. Great start. That's Japan's number one player. Had that great run in Indianapolis. Had the match in hand. Missed a ten pin that cost him. But look at the style of Shota Kawazoe. And a 16-time champion in Japan. Yeah, he's uh, by far their best player. And he was so genuinely thrilled to be drafted. He was the number two overall pick. Number two pick. Most good. Well, that power actually crossed over and left behind the three. So at the moment, LAX without a strike. All this power, he's fortunate to just leave the three pin. Ten kicks late. So the muscle working a double. Send up a U.S. Open champion, 2016 version for 300 in the step ladder finals. Francois Lavoie. Classy, just a classy shot. Beautiful shot by Frankie Lavoie. And I love this game. It's just so physically sound. He's a shot maker. That's why he's a former U.S. Open champion. And that's the one major this guy hadn't grabbed yet. And just a hair high for Jason. And talking with the players in practice, they all agreed that the left lane hooks a little bit more than the right lane. You can see how deep Jason Balmonte is already. Looks like he's stuck just a touch. Now, I gotta, I gotta admit, I, I think we all thought he would be number five guy. Well, we've seen it before in this competition when you have a really strong left-hander. He only has to worry about himself on that side of the lane. He doesn't see the transition, the right-hander see. And if he's got a good look, why not? And Anthony Simonson wraps a 10-pin down, so a four-for-four four start for the Motown Muscle. This is the one versus eight seed battle, but again, we'll remind you, well, the seating took place completely different side of the building here. So here's their decision to put Jacob Buttruff an anchor instead of Jason Belmonte. And Butchoff always throws urethane. We'll see what his look, look looks like in terms of reaction. Oh my, he just got his out of a 7-10 with a messenger there. So they go through the order without a strike first time around. Nice break to catch the 7-pin late, only leaving the 10, but like you said, Dave, no strikes. So EJ Tackett will be next for Motown. He is their anchor. So again, we won't see Jacob again until the 10th frame. Took a while to get there. That was coast to coast. All right, Jacob, good shot, mate. Well, so far it is a perfect start for the muscle. We'll see if this rev rate monster can keep it going. How is that possible? That pin was tapped. Don't 
don't discount this team. This team is loaded with great players. You're looking at a 25-year-old as he leaves that stone seven who's already eligible for the Hall of Fame. Yeah, nine titles. And he, whoa. Well, that was a shot. Yeah. He, and that cut the muscle lead down to 21 pins as Jason Belmont, he poses with the fans, and Josh Blanchard does what Josh Blanchard does. So to call Zoe as well. And a long trip to get here, worth it to him. The Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League Elias Cup quarterfinals are brought to you by Ocean View at Falmouth. An active, maintenance-free lifestyle just minutes from Portland. This is retirement living. By Go Bowling. Promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you. Just log on to GoBowling.com. By Port Property Management. Locally owned and operated since 1993. And by Shipyard Brewing. Tradition, experience, and innovation in Maine since 1994. Please drink responsibly. Really one of the prettiest states in the country, I think, in Maine. And also, they bring the lumber here, so to speak, at Bayside Bowl. So it is time for Randy Peterson and Track Tech Talk, and you selected Jacob Butcher. Just a, a, a very unusual and unique style. He's got a very short backswing, so he has to get his feet running to create ball speed. But this is what's so unique about Jacob Butcher. The hypermobility enables him to roll his wrist underneath the ball. Like, I mean, it's just incredible. And then he just uncorks it at the bottom of the swing and makes a urethane bowling ball hook more than any other player on tour. He seems to approve as he was watching on an overhead monitor here, so we tee it back up with the leadoff bowler, Stu Williams. This will be his last frame of this game. It's best of two. If we have a tie, we will have a roll-off to move on to the semis. There you go. First strike for LAX. Did he increase his speed there? I'm sorry. I was listening to Stu. What did well, you say? As well you should. Did he increase his speed there? It looked like he was just a little bit tighter with his angle through the front part of the lane. And you wonder how that single pin will affect our scoring here and how the muscle will hang on. Everybody else struck except DJ Tango. Yeah! Well, that's how you counter. Come on. Really strong player in Josh Blanchard. He's going with the straighter, his greater attitude with the urethane bowling ball. Well, we'll see what lessons were learned by LAX. Bush, he taps out a little bit of trouble, left of the single right, pin. And we apologize if you understand Swedish cursing. <laughs> yeah, and, and when you hear a player yell push, that means they, they got the ball inside a target and they're on, looking for some oil to try to hold it on line. So Martin's just going to have to sit around and root on the rest of the guys. Trust the process. Let's get back to the last few And here is Shota, who's struck. Oh, that's through the oh. face, and that seven pin makes this considerably trickier. And an opening perhaps for L.A., but he can make this. Yeah. He can make this, and Shota's going to try to get the ball over to the right side of the three pin right here. He's going to drive the three into the seven, and the ball will take out the 6'10". Well, go to the spare ball here for this. three come off the back but it did not right. so well, suddenly two of the last three frames for the muscle right, have right, been right, weak right, yeah we have a, we have a new ball game but it's up to LAX now to start stringing some strikes together 
Max scored for Motown Muscle, 235. Max score for LAX, 226. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now he hated it. And he, well, he broke up a lot of nastiness behind him there, but right away he didn't like that shot. Well, the 36910 was up, and you don't want to shoot at that. And now it's just the 36, so way easier on Oscu Palerma after that great break there. It's almost like LAX and their players are afraid to get the ball to the right. Look out! Oh, I feared a chop there for a second, but he got it. So here's Frankie Lavoie. Well, he makes it look easy, doesn't he? I, I, like, I like to call it efficiency of motion. It doesn't look like there's any wasted moving parts going on in his game. You know, only player in the history of the U.S. Open to bowl 300 on the telecast en route to his victory. But it's just so simplistic and, like I said, no wasted motion. So, Belmo. So good with lane adjustments, as good as anybody there is. That was in between fourth and fifth arrow and went out to about the fourth board. That ball went out for burger and fries and came back with steak and baked potato. Mm. Yeah. Anthony Simonson was paying attention to how to play this as a two-hander. Uh, th there's the answer there. That, that's the way you respond. And that puts them in the two teens. To have any chance now, Jacob Butcher needs to strike out the 10th frame as Simonson <laughs> pushes the crowd. He does not lack confidence. All right, run it on. All right, So see what happened here. This one went way left. And it chops straight through the face. That's a tremendous pickup. It seems like to him a difficult spare. No time just needs to keep it on the lane. I think EJ Tackett can handle that. They're going to take game one. Funny. We have way too many hot shots this game. You could hear Martin Larson say we had way too many bad shots this game. Now, they're switching lanes. So we'll see how that left lane will play for the muscles. Dang it, looking flush shot there for Jacob. Dave, keep in mind that you have two two-handers coming off that left lane in Belmonte and Oscu Palermo. They've absolutely destroyed uh, that left lane. Well, this guy's not too easy on lanes either. Uh, no. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they've got some serious rev rate as well, Motown. So how these guys adjust in game number two is going to be fascinating. So here's the deal. If L.A. wants to have any chance, they must win game two. If not, they are out. The number one seed will be defeated by the number eight. If they win game two, we'll have a one-ball roll-off. Captain's choice. There you go. So Tackett's missed single pin, has no effect on the game. Do you, do you think they're in the same part of the game as they are on the left lane? No, I'm probably right of them. Okay. Simonson was asking EJ right there, do you think you're playing the same part of the lane okay. as LAX? And he says, no, I think I'm right of all those guys. Definitely is. That's about the 18th, 19th board. And so the Motown Muscle ends up with a comfortable game one victory. Can they get a second and lock out the number one seed, LAX? A slow start doomed LA. They just couldn't get it going while Motown hit the front four to send a message.
that eight is ready to take out number one. So the Elias Cup will go to one of these eight teams. And right now, the Motown Muscle has staked their first claim with a victory over LAX in game one. 2013, the first winners, the New York City WTT Kingpin. We go to our Ebonite flashback. They defeat the Motown Muscle in a two-game total pinfall Baker match, 440 to 407. We were at Woodland Bowl that day in Indianapolis. And that is the inaugural PBA League Elias Cup Championship. And who do you turn to for the big shot? Who else? PDW yeah! yeah! slammed the door with Billie Jean King. By the way, the man on the left there, Tommy Jones, has his fingerprints all over yeah. that cup. He sure does. He's won it four times yeah. on, on each of these teams. He's with New York, and he went to Silver Lake. And the last two years, he's been with the Dallas Rikers, and he had the, the big shot last year that wrapped yeah. it up. So, game one, Motown Muscle, captained by the Hall of Famer, Del Ballard Jr. You see the front four, they survived E.J. Tackett's mistake in the fifth, and they go on to a comfortable win. Andrew Kane, the manager for LAX, is standing by with Kimberly. Thanks, Dave. So, Andrew, your team as a whole had a hard time finding strikes on the left lane. You guys are switching to the right now, but you also have a lineup change, so what is it? Yeah, we, uh, we first of all, we think the left uh, the left lane is a little bit tighter, so we were hoping to get out to a good start, made our spares, um, but just couldn't come back against uh, the strikes of Motown through. We're also going to do a little bit of a lineup change, try to mix up the order. Uh, hopefully it frees our guys up, frees our swings up, and we can throw some strikes and get back in the match. All right, we wish you luck, guys. Thank you. And that change will be a reversal of one and two. So Stu Williams moves from leadoff to number two. And that man there, Martin Larson, will be the new number one. He'll be the leadoff bowler. Will Motown wrap it up right here, or will we go to a one-ball roll-off? Who would you choose if you were Del Ballard Jr., if you had to? Again, the beautiful Maine coastline. And we are in Portland, the Ocean View at Falmouth. PBA League Elias Cup. The first of two quarterfinals today with LAX, the number one seed, taking on the number eight seed, Motown Muscle. Again, this is Baker's, so it's team format. Each bowler gets two frames. Team advances by winning both games. So that means a Motown victory here, and LA has been knocked out, and the Muscle move on to the semis. Motown won the first game by almost 40 without making a spare. Josh Blanchard doesn't have to shoot one yet. <laughs> well, he's making great shots. And it's a must-win time for LAX. Otherwise, they're going to be heading home early. So here's the change we mentioned before the break. Martin Larson leading off. And he gets a reluctant five-pin to tumble. And down he goes. <laughs> I, I, did he trip over something? What happened? His own shadow, apparently. I mean, last time I saw a guy go down like that, he left a solid eight. <laughs> Who was that guy? No idea. All right, and hello. I think he tripped over the ball return. Yeah, he, did. he did. That's awesome. He was selling that strike. And that's what we saw from LAX on that left lane. The fear of getting it to the right, they get it too straight up the lane, and it goes high. Shota leads to the 310. Last game he left the 3-6-7-10, failed to convert. And it's another split for Shota. Split the pair. And that leads us to our hammer. Tough spare is the replay. Well, if you're going to make a split, why not make the baby split? They don't call it the baby split for nothing. It's the easiest one to make. You cover both pins with a bowling ball. Now Stu Williams in the number two position this game. You 
would say a quitter 10. Quitter 10. And ball just comes in just a little late. Good shot, though. It's one of the most frustrating leaves, I think. It, at least it is for me. Because it's kind of calling you out. It's a weak 10. It's kind of like, well, maybe if I had a little bit more power, I could kick it out. Penny's appropriately punished by Stu. And Remoton did not make any changes in their order. I didn't think that'd be an issue, though. Well, I mean, if that's going to be the, the result. LAX talking strategy after Stu's shot. They cannot lose this game. If they do, they are out. Oh, my. Seven pin was just cut in half. Another great shot by Frankie Lavoie. Seven pin needs reconstructive surgery. in new pins. I'm hiring that guy. <laughs> well, and that's the difference in rep rates. That, that ball was pretty much entering the, the pocket the exact same way Stu, Stu Williams' ball entered. Stu leaves a flat 10. This could close the 7-10 out. Hey, Simonson, you could see him just move his whole body over to make sure he covered that. I think Simonson made a ball change for that left lane. What you're hearing there is someone uh, yelling, Aussie, 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 and of course the appropriate response is, oi, 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 which tickles Belmo, no doubt. Yes, sir. There's another 7-10. That was a carbon copy of Oskar's head. Yes, it was. Jason's good at following directions. Right lane looks a lot more playable. A little bit smoother. Yeah, I, I learned my lesson watching you. Attack. That's just too good. It's just too good. And right now, they are... Not throwing jabs. These guys are throwing knockout punches. Haymakers led by E.J. Tackett. That's a three-bagger for Motown. Now looking to stay even. Buttrick has to strike here in the fifth. He's a big winner in Indianapolis. Whoa. So he'll try again. And he'll go through the whole routine one more time. Talking about Indianapolis, he ran a... Ran off of that tournament both in qualifying. He was the number one seed and he won that match easily as well. He was the man uh, that we could. And he's a man right there, too. Oh, I like this one. Even through five. You strike. I'll strike. Well, you know, you got to make take care of your teammates in this kind of Baker format. So in order, if we had Martin Larson nearly decapitate himself, and apparently Jason Belmonte is sealing this off, that might be kind to scene tape there. Safety first, this crowd <laughs> understands. This week, Extra Frames live coverage features the conclusion of the PBA 50 Florida Open. Start to finish coverage of the PBA 50 Tour's first major of the season, yes! the United Healthcare National Championship, and the PWBA's first event of the season, the Las Vegas Open. Don't miss this triple header of action. Get your yearly, monthly, or three-day subscription today by clicking on the Extra Frame link in the menu section of PBA.com. With Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler, Dave Lamont, first quarter final, the PBA League Elias Cup, and with... The muscle ahead 1-0. We are even through five. We go back to our leadoff bowlers, Martin Larson and Josh Blanchard. And Josh wants a little noise in this crowd 
always eager to provide. a soft 10 first time that he will have to shoot a spare today there's your urethane 10 pin <clears throat> about the 11th board at the arrows and six pin lays in the right channel doa Woo. skinny jeans Woo. Yeah, you can smile now. The smile is relief. Oh, I got stand in a different spot. I normally stand farther left. I have to move five right. I move three or four, but I But now, Mark. Oh, my. No, I didn't expect that. Wow. Rip rack four shot, pin. Martin. Well, that was unnecessary. I don't know who said that. Stu Williams. <laughs> Stu is absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, at that point, I wouldn't have blamed Martin if he had kicked it after that shot. After his Tony Finau walk back. How about that one? My goodness, dude, they're shaving them like deli meat here. I don't know if you saw the Masters, but Tony Finau oh, yes. went down after his hole-in-one. At least Mark Larson didn't tweak his ankle. This has to be our Barbasol close shave of the day. I'm not sure if the ball hit it or if the wind knocked it over. <laughs> that was Zowie that time. Get a little more room. Finished up nicely in the 1-3. Pressure back on LAX. And that's how this game has gone. Now that's in the States. Stu is very accomplished in Europe. And that's why. He has only one title in the States. Such a great player. Can do so many different things with a bowling ball. And then I just love Come the follow-through. That little short follow-through there. He's finished for this game. And there's a quiet 10 there. Big chance now for LAX. Osku Palermo will be coming up for LAX. A chance to put them in the lead. And that one made with no doubt. We've had a few that have been pretty airy. So Osku with a strike in his earlier appearance in this game. And he doubles for his personal double, and now LAX has the lead. For the first time. Good shot, man. Good shot. Yeah, it was. Good Great shot. shot. When they needed it most, Oscoop Palermo steps up. And that's a full rack attack by the two-hander. Gives it a little Mutumbo over to the other team. <laughs> uh, Anthony Simonson. Almost a must-strike. So it really is a must-strike situation here for the muscle. I'm not sure Simonson has missed all day. And he remains undefeated. We're not done. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Four for four for Simonson. That's all you can ask for the 
player that sets up the 10th frame. So let's see if Gummo responds. Remember, Jacob Buttruth is the anchor for LAX. If he does not strike on this ball, Motown Muscle can strike out in the 10th and knock off LAX. Oh, wow, they didn't take a wicked left turn. That was a snap hook. Mike, you can make this one. You got that one. I know you're scared. Well, I think uh, I'm about as shocked as he is. We have seen this made before fairly recently. Alex Hoskins did it at the USBC Masters on our telecast. And now the Motown Muscle, as Randy mentioned, in position to lock down this game and eliminate LAX. First strike and count for EJ Tackett, and they are going to eliminate LAX. So an AC defeating a one, not quite as dramatic as a 116 the NCAA tournament. Hang on. LAX still has a chance. Spare strike. Motown shoots 219. Jacob Buttrup would then need to double and get nine to win by a pin. Now let's remind everybody that EJ Tech had missed a single pin in game number one. It's a seven pin. He's not going to miss that. I'll turn big. I'll turn big. Okay, I'll turn. Count is important here. Make him step up. He's looking to fill ten. And Buttruff right now knows that. He can still win this game for LAX. And Buttress struck on his lane in his first ball mm -hmm. in frame number five. Oh, That's a clutch shot there for EJ. Yep. Double nine for Jacob Buttress. I got around him just enough. Well, Now, two and nine, and we'll have a one ball roll off. Anything less, and Motown moves on. That's number one. Great shot, great shot. Rumble, rumble, buddy. Andrew Kane saying, that's why you're here. Do your thing. So, yeah, I think if you'd have had that line, but I think you slowed down a little bit from your previous shot because you moved left. Yeah. And I don't think you, I think. No, this is what you call this. high flush. Now, again, that ball looked like it could have knocked down 20 pins. I've never seen a player that can make regular urethane look that much in the back part of the lane. He has to strike here. Muscle are moving on to the semifinals. Are you serious? All right, good shot, buddy. Wow. That was a beautiful shot. And it just didn't catch the pin at the end. That shot, of course, doesn't mean anything. And yeah, that's a tough one for LAX. And the Motown Muscle, captained by Dell Ballard Jr., moving on. A lot of crowd noise as he was going through his approach. He still executed and made a great shot. Kimberly is standing by. Kimberly. I am. I am lane side, and I'm with the winners. And Adele and EJ, you guys just took out the number one seed. Talk to me about that last shot in this last match. I thought he threw it great right off his head. I thought he threw that one better than the first one. Yeah. I thought the first one was going to go a little high and late there in the second one. I thought he cured. And when Belmo left the door open for you, talk to me about the pressure you were feeling. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those events where, you know, we want to all want to win so bad. And 
this lane was hooking a little bit more in that first shot in the 10th. I just elbowed it a little bit and caused it to four pin. The second one I moved and, and kept my hand underneath it a little bit and it was able to lay off and strike. And You know, it was just one of those things. I was trying to get the ball through the front and I just, I didn't make a great shot. Um, it wasn't terrible. It got nine and I was able to make the spare and get 10 in the in the field to put a little bit of pressure on them, make them double and uh, at least get nine on the last shot. So, um, pass off to Jacob. He threw two really good shots there in the 10th and um, you know, that's just bowling. One one shot can decide a whole tournament sometimes. Might not have been the shot you wanted, but you guys are now moving forward. Absolutely. Congratulations. Uh, indeed, they are moving on to the semifinals and will take on the winner of the Brooklyn Styles and Silver Lake Adams Splitters. That is our next quarterfinal coming up. The Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League Elias Cup quarterfinals are brought to you by MainQuarterly.com. The main thing is you. Original. Get inspired at MainQuarterly.com. By BowlingBall.com. It's where bowlers go with free shipping on every item every day. By Hyatt Place Old Port. Check in to Hyatt Place Old Port. Check out Portland, Maine. And by Dexter, the number one bowling shoe on the PBA Tour. So the Motown Muscle have moved on to the semifinals on May 6th at 1 o'clock on ESPN. They'll take on the winner of this upcoming two-game match between the Brooklyn Styles and the Silver Lake Adam Splitters, seeds four and five. Don't forget, we still have the Kingpins, the two-time defending champion strikers yet to face off. That'll be Sunday. And then the Hitmen and the Lumberjacks before they try to move on to the May 6th semifinals. And, of course, May 13th will be the Elias Cup Finals, 1 o'clock on ESPN. And right, now, let's meet the teams for match number two, starting with the goal bowling Silver Lake Adam Splitters. Leading off, he owns seven PBA titles in a major from Gothenburg, Sweden, Jesper Svensson. In the number two position, a five-time PBA titleist, he's earned two titles here at Bayside Bowl from Columbia, South Carolina, Dick Allen. The number three bowler is the owner of five regional titles from Oswego, Illinois, E.J. Johnson. In the number four position, owner of two PBA titles from Tampa, Tom Doherty. And the Anchorman has 18 tour titles, three majors, and is now a PBA Hall of Famer from Double Oak, Texas, Chris Barnes. Uh -huh. And a manager from Yuma Linda, California, owns four PBA tour titles, and one of the great minds of the game, Mark Baker. And now let's meet the lineup for the Ocean View at Falmouth, Brooklyn Styles leading off 107 titles, including eight majors, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. In the number two position, 35 championships, fifth all time, including three majors from Jackson, New Jersey, Parker Ball III. In the number three position from Cocoa Beach, Florida, he's won two titles on tour, Jason Sterner. In the number four position, owner of 12 titles, including two majors from Montgomery, Illinois, Sean Rash. the anchor man from Rahway, New Jersey, the winner of this year's PBA Tournament of Champions, OG Matt O'Grady. And 
the manager from Jackson, New Jersey. 53 years as a professional and one of the greatest ever. Hall of Famer, Johnny Petraglia. All right, Randy, I am not going to argue with Johnny Petraglia about bowling. You can. He's picked Matt O'Grady as the anchor bowler over Walter Ray, over Parker Bone, I mean, so on. Yeah, and over Sean Rash. Yeah. I mean, that was Sean Rash's position. And now, all of a sudden, you've got a player in the number five spot who only, only has one title, and that was one just a couple of months ago. So I don't know what they saw in practice, but I know one thing. Matt O'Grady is a talented young man and i think he's going to thrive in this environment well i think we all agreed he should have been here a year ago but he wasn't he's here now now for silver lake we have some familiar faces nobody more familiar than their anchor bowler who just joined the hall of fame this year yeah chris barnes will be anchoring uh, at least uh, going into game number one uh, but you know they have a secret weapon on their team and his name is Dick Allen. He used to be known as Richie Allen, okay. but changed his name to Dick Allen, today, but he's, he's the same clutch bowler. Remember, not too long ago, he was an MVP here in Portland, Maine. And he has won two titles in this building. He absolutely loves it here, and Bayside Bowl loves him back. So, the first of our two-game quarterfinal about to begin. We welcome you back to the Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League. This is the legendary Bayside Bowl, and you can see why. A balcony above us, of course, is a rooftop bar, and the people, the fans who come out. Where they find the costumes, I don't know. I don't think even the Internet <laughs> is the place to find those costumes. In the meantime, standing by with our anchor bowlers is Kimberly. Thanks, Dave. So, Matt O'Grady, so you've had a great 2018 so far. You were the TOC champion, your first ever PBA Tour title. Well, that was a singles match, and now you're here with the teams. So, uh, how do you adapt to this atmosphere with this pressure? And you're sitting in the anchor position. These guys trust me with the anchor position. I don't know how. They're some of the best in the game back there that I've idolized since I was a child. I'm just going to try and make two good, great shots the first game. If it doesn't work, we'll forget about it, as they say down in Brooklyn, and move to the right lane. Well, you got any nerves here? Because this guy has won it twice. Uh, he's pretty good. I've seen him on TV a lot, too. But just going to try and make some good shots, and we'll see where it ends up. All right. Thank you so much. Good luck to your team. Now, Chris, I just mentioned to him that you have won this twice. So you're used to being in front of this huge crowd here. But talk to me about the pressure of being in the anchor position. Well, it certainly changes, but this is also the most fun event of the year. It's fun to win on your own. Uh, there's one, there's no more pressure than having four other or five other guys counting on you, but there's no greater victory either. And so, and this is the greatest atmosphere we have. Uh, I can't wait. It sure is. Thank you so much. Thank you. And good luck to your team. Guys, we're going to send it back to you. All right, thank you, Kimberly. And there is the classic, the classic Chris Barnes headshot of his mullet, which he's autographed that, by the way. So here we go. Two games. Win them both, you move on. That's what Motown did. And we, we had these guys meet before in Silver Lake one in a roll-off a year ago. So is there anything that hasn't been said about Walter Ray Williams Jr. in bowling? Greatest of all time. Well, that's good enough for me. A little bit light on that hit there. I'll give you something you didn't know. He is a viciously successful Candy Crush Saga player. And I only know that because I play, and I occasionally see him in the top spot out of all the people who play in certain games. So pretty much at horseshoes, we know. Yeah. Bowling, obvious. And now apparently there's another skill he has. I don't even know what that game is. Well, he's I, good at it. I think I've seen it before, but I've never played it. Yeah. You would expect that from Walter Ray. Now, we did not have any re-oil done here, so they are bowling on a bit of a burn as we take a look at the powerful two-handed lefty, Jesper Stenson. Now, there's not going to be much burn on, the, on his side of the lane. There will be once he starts. <laughs> but after he throws a couple of shots, there will be, right? Ooh. Whiffed wow. on the head pin completely there. Yeah, two completely different styles between Jesper and Jacob Buttram. 
Jesper likes to go real straight with urethane. Jacob likes to hook it, he likes to curve it. So an early challenge here for Svensson. Seven PBA titles already and that major that we showed you. Oh my God, he wrapped it around. Yeah. How could that be? Pick him up. Unlucky. No, we got you, we got you, we got you. All right. That's what the textbook tells you to do. Yeah, I'll tell you, you, you got to shoot a washout, and the worst break is when the head pin wraps around either the 7 or the 10, depending on if you're left-handed or right-handed. That stinks. And uh, quite a change for Parker Bowman the third. So you have... About 150 titles total between the first two bowlers on this Brooklyn Styles side. Yeah, if you uh, count the senior events, all the regionals, and everything else, Mike Parker's 37 national events, Walter Ray 46. 35 for Parker. 35 yep. for 46. That's fifth all time. Of course, he's won on the PBA 50 tour as well. Excuse me, 47 for Walter Ray. Yep. Eight majors for Walter Ray. Three for Parker. And Dick Allen, who is the Baron of Bayside Bowling. Two titles here. A little high. So left. He got it inside a target. You heard him say it, so left. Boy, has he been so good here in Portland, Maine. It was the main shootout that was held a few days before this madness began. On, yeah. And there's your winner right there. Yep. Right, get out of the way early. A lot of success. <laughs> Jason Sterner, second round pick. Cocoa Beach, Florida on the East Coast. Beautiful game here. Left. Almost got the Brooklyn hit. Which would have been appropriate considering. Good night. Uh, this never had a chance as it never got farther right of third arrow. Pocket six. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> First appearance for this young man, owner of five regional titles. He'll get PBA tour titles. Zero doubt about that. AJ Johnson. Heck of an athlete, was a high school quarterback. Boy, can he bring the thunder. A sleeper there. Right up, right up. It looks like you got to get the right lane and, and at least get a win under your belt when you're on that right lane because the left lane certainly looks tougher. I think if you come off of the right lane trailing by a game, it's a tall order to try to get even and win a match or win a game on the left lane. We got a long way for that. It covered it beautifully. The former McHenry product. There you go. <laughs> go. Go now. Now Sean Ratch. World class talent. Yeah. He understood the left lane. They got it in with the perfect spot down lane. Just inside a third arrow. And a beautiful shot by Sean Rash. Now Tom Doherty. A unique way to get the ball released. 
stalker of that one. Wow. Different style with no thumb, same result as the six just crushes the ten for Tom Doherty. So here's OG, Matt O'Grady. And normally OG stands for old goat. Or original gangster. Yeah. If you're a nice team fan. Well, there you go. Any question about nerves? Right on the board. And playing the lanes completely different than everybody else. Now, he's had experience in team competitions in USA versus the world at the World Series of Bowling. So he has done this type of format. But this is a little bit different than the World Series. Chris Barnes knows that better than anybody. Never in this Ryder Cup-like atmosphere. Yeah. Initial CB, 15 yards, and a double. What? How did he do that? That yeah. zip line to the pocket. Right? Unbelievable. Well, they're all here in Portland. Sean Rash and his power game. Looking for a little more love from the crowd. Well, Chris Barnes, I can't count the number of strikes he has thrown in his distinguished right, career. How this one struck, we can't figure out. Right, and, and it, as straight as this is, and as much hand as Chris has, I thought it was going Brooklyn, so that's why I gave him a 15-yard personal foul penalty. <laughs> but, you know, Chris knows what he's doing. He's trying to go real straight. You see, maybe he got it in just a little bit, but his hand was right, and speed was good, and that ball ended up dead flush. I was kidding with him the other yesterday during qualifying. I, he grabbed his phone. I said, what are you, texting your wife? He goes, no, I have lane conditions. He's got a, oh, all, yeah. all that stuff, man. Just a touch high, and he pays for it. So this is going to help Silver Lake if they can take advantage of it with their leadoff bowler, Jesper Svensson. And Jesper opened in his first frame. So Walter A's going, that's all for him in this game. Remember, this is best of two, basically. If you split the two, we will have a one-ball roll-off. If you go 2-0, oh, as Motown did earlier, you're moving on to the semis. Last time up for yes for washout. Let's see what kind of adjustment he makes. Pretty good one. Well, you never see Jesper get that fired up. He does it here. He does. Big shot, working on a double, trying to take advantage of the opening given to him by Walter Ray. Steps up, four slaps to seven out. It's a three-bagger for Silver Lake. And the lead grows. So a huge shot here for the great Parker Bone. Nothing worse than leaving a pocket 7 10. There's Mark Roth, one of three players to make the 7 10 on television. Yeah, I'd grab Mark for quick some advice on this. Mark doesn't need any. That's a stunner. Your two Hall of Famers living in the 6 and 7. Now Dick Allen. A couple of years ago in USA versus the world, he had the winning strike. Mixes him up here. MVP. He's been so good over the years for Coach Mark Baker. Yeah, you get to keep three players, and then you have to give two back, and then you draft two. There's a flush for Jason Sterner. Sterner was a draft pick. They actually put him back into the pool right. and they were and Johnny Petragli was able to get him back. 
A.J. Johnson, a draft pick this year. 257 possible for Silver Lake, 212 for Brooklyn. But down it goes. And the Adams splitters have split this one wide open. Watch the nine pin go late here. Ball goes right by it. It catches just enough of the nine pin to send it on its way. That Rash has thrown two perfect shots. Yep. Get all the information you can in the tip. Another strike here, and Silver Lake will lock up game one. And you might have heard Sean Rash tell Matt O'Grady to get all the information you can for the tent. Now, Tom does not want quiet. The noise you hear when the bowlers are on the approach is encouraged here. Hang on, I gotta take my meds. Yeah, hang on. I, my phone rang. My psychologist called to talk to me. This is just totally unnecessary <laughs> from every aspect. It never has been necessary. <laughs> A great shot by Tom. He has the attitude to be able to, right there. to shake that <laughs> Dang it. I was going to give it the business right there. Oh, my God. So here is O'Grady. got naked. Got to have them all to force Barnes to get good count. 212 is the max. Yes. Punishment. Dragway, no freebies, let him earn it. Woo! Bringing the heat. I had a feeling that he would thrive in this situation. Very outgoing yep. personality. Fits this swat, environment. As a kid, back in Southern California, I love seeing that. What a powerful display by Matt O'Grady to punch out in the tenth. That's what an anchor man is to do. So he throws four strikes in that game. Chris Barnes needs eight, one, or nine on the first ball. That's why that first one helps. All right, spare it up. Two for a tie. Sorry, Two for a tie. Up. Spare. Spare it up. They win. Right, I gotta be honest. I don't know how you <laughs> you pick up less than two on this. Well, if you catch the two pin, you're gonna you're gonna get at least two of them. right there. So game one goes to the Adam splitters. It's not the one I would have picked to shoot. Play a good shot here. <laughs> if they win game right. two, they will hey, move no on and take right. on the Motown Muscle in May. Right. 
invite you to join us for our next PBA telecast Sunday, April 29th at 1 o'clock Eastern for the Queen View at Falmouth PBA League quarterfinals. It'll be the number two seat Geico NYC WTT Kingpins against the number seven, the defending champs, the Shipyard Dallas Strikers. And then number three, Cisco Philadelphia Hitmen take on the six seed, the Port Property Portland Lumberjacks. That's next Sunday at 1 p.m. All right, it's an opportunity for somebody out there to get a bowling lesson from a Hall of Famer and Randy Peterson. Let's go to Tony in Ohio. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm here at Tiki Lanes, Lancaster, Ohio. My question for the day is, uh, growing up learning to bowl, we were told to keep our shoulders square with the foul line, square with the target line. As the game has progressed and we are more likely and needed to swing the ball, when and where in our approach do we open our shoulders to receive the inside out swing? All right, so Tony, it's a great question, but typically what we see is the shoulders don't open until the ball actually passes the hip. If you open too early, you run the risk of pulling the swing behind you, and you don't want that. But most importantly, if you're trying to feed the ball to the right, make sure you get your hips open as well, and that'll allow that swing to tuck up underneath you, help you to throw it to the right. Hey, Tony, cool shirt, too. We like that one very much. So match number two is coming up. The Silver Lake Adam Splitters have the one nothing advantage over the Brooklyn Styles. We're going to find out who's moving on to the semis when we return. So will the Silver Lake Adam Splitters move on to the semifinals or can the Brooklyn Styles rally? No lineup changes for the coming game here. Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. Time for our Columbia 300 fun fact. The bucket. Not a popular lead. The 2 4 5 8 spare combination for a righty, and of course for the lefties, 3 5 6 9. Chris Barnes almost left the bucket. I ended up making the spare and then struck to wrap up the match. So it will be the same five. So that means Jesper Svensson starts. Now they switch to the left hand lane to the Adam Splitters. Oh boy, that's what we're used to seeing. One of the more entertain entertaining players on this tour when he gets it going, boy, is he fun to watch. Now Walter Ray Williams Jr. who struggled a bit in his first game. on that 10 pin he liked that shot better shot on the better lane Owns many records. and the seven time player of the year handles that rather easily you gotta love his spare ball too it's an old black diamond <laughs> I think it was, I, I'm not exactly sure what year it came out, but I want to say it was somewhere in the 60s. Wow. 60s or se early 70s, maybe. Well, the right-handers have learned after watching other matches what works on that left lane. Yeah, they, yeah I, I think O'Grady showed them a lot. That if you can move right, you can get a, you can find a hook spot from that first arrow. Now Parker Bowen the third. The match turned when he and Walter Ray Williams in frame six and seven left splits that they could not convert. Let the great ones make adjustments. Driven snow, sir. There's something that you don't see very often. Parker Bone actually falling off of a shot. One of the best the game's ever seen and being able to post up at the foul line. AJ Johnson in his first appearance here in Portland has been clean. An 
unfortunate yeah, wraparound on that 10. Come on, down, run down. Right down. Good shot by AJ. That looked like a winner. Yeah. Watch the six seconds to the right. Slingshots around the 10 pin. AJ Bolden, hey, Colin, got these guys got you, got you, got you. Collins, there's okay, chance, okay. and there's all okay. sorts of things that go on at the college level. You don't see that with a pro. Jason Starr, big winner last year. Messenger denied. Yeah, I want. Good shot here by Jason. And the messenger, messenger behind the 10. Here it comes. And just doesn't get enough of it. Good cover. With the number four bowler, Tom Doherty, his responsibilities in the fourth and the ninth frames in this Baker format. Tom has two PBA titles, the Wolf Open 2016. He's just dialed in on this pair right here. He has a habit of doing that in this event. Make a good one. Make a good one, team. Come on. Yeah, he was a retainee by Mark Baker. So was this guy by Johnny Petragli. I think Petragli spent about three tenths of a second figuring that one out. Wow. Oh boy, he broke up about four splits there. <laughs> two eight ten to two ten to just the two pin. One, two, three. Uh, I left out the two four eight ten. <laughs> Two four eight ten, two eight ten, two ten. All right, bye bye. And a spare. Right, I'm sorry, guys. Right. Slipped out of it. God damn it. All right. All right. Now we get to the anchorman, Chris Barnes. Eighteen tour titles, triple crown holder. Has had great success in this event, as you see. And of course, new member of the PBA Hall of Fame. I'd like to see Barnes. He played first arrow like Matt O'Grady did. Just inside of that target, but great result. Good shot. Come on. Good hand, right, yeah. Bring it over the top. Great strategy for Chris Barr. Straighter is greater when they get a little goofy. This is right up the 7-8 board, pretty straight. And he just shreds the rack with that 16-pounder. Messenger spun in front. Well, Matt O'Grady doing his job. Hitting the pocket, making good shots. Struck out in game one to force Silver Lake's hand. And wow, puts that aside, up. however. That's always scary. <laughs> Down 21 are the styles and a loss here and they have been they will be eliminated. Now you can outfit yourself just like the pros with official PBA jerseys including jerseys you can customize to look like any of the eight teams in the PBA league. Or you can customize a jersey for yourself or for the team you bowl league with at home. So you click on the menu tab of PBA.com homepage and select the shop PBA link to get started. Randy, Dave, and Kimberly here at Bayside Bowl. Game number two of the quarterfinals in the Ocean View of Falmouth PBA League. The Adam Splitters and their leadoff bowler here today, Jesper Spencer, with a 21-pin advantage halfway through this one. And if they win this one, they move on. 
and pushed. Oh. Wow. What happened? Was that the head pin that slid all the way across? <laughs> I, I need a replay. All right, let's check it out and see if it is indeed the head pin. Yep. <laughs> I have to laugh when I wow. see pins move like that. There you go. Walter Ray Williams Jr. responding and trying to keep Brooklyn in this one. I didn't say you weren't going to get six, but you weren't going to watch out. But still, the Adam Splitters with the advantage. Oh, that's right. What a classy shot there by Dick Allen. He almost looks bored. He's playing it cool. He's just so used to doing this. Especially in this state. Brooklyn Styles in big trouble. Looking for their first double. And the Hall of Famers come through. Great shot by the great Hall of Famer, TB3. And it's their first double, game two. Not one, but two on the fist pump. AJ Johnson has stepped in very nicely. You see the max. It'll be a very high scoring game. 248 may not do it for the Styles. Yeah, you're down. Oh. Down you go. Hempin, sidewall. Hey, Tenpin, get out of my face. Tom Doherty is concerned of getting his hand injured by these A.J. Johnson high fives. Jason Sterner has got to match that. No, sir. Unless you get a rare backside trip on a two. All but over for Brooklyn. Adam Splitters can strike out for 279. Yeah, Brooklyn hasn't bowled that badly in this game, but Silver Lake's just hot. So the only blemish on the scorecard was a massive rigging 10 by AJ in the third. Everything else all strikes. Boy, they're making the left lane look real easy. Yeah, please don't leave another stone eight, Tom. Tom is showing the pass. He has a sense of humor about himself. That was terrible. Left of target the whole way. But just the 6'10. And Tom Gordy. Very solid spare shooter. Covers the 610 easily. I think the vote would be he owes me 100 now. Yeah. Must strike here for Raz. Oh my gosh. Officially over. Max score now for Brooklyn with a spare 216. Two good friends right there. Mark Baker gave the induction speech at the PBA Hall of Fame dinner for Chris Barnes. And the Adam Splitters are moving on. 
They will take on the Motown Muscle in the first of the two PBA League semifinals. Yeah, when you throw man weight, you get breaks like that. Man weight from that angle, <laughs> usually not a whole lot left. <laughs> Young guys, it wears off eventually, doesn't it? So, there's your head pin coming over to finish the job. That'll be a little high. No, it won't. Again, what is he doing? He's throwing that frozen rope, man. He's kind of getting it to read early and not a whole lot down lane. He seems to be defying the conditions. You want to see anything? You engage? Throw this one? <laughs> You want to draw one? I tried that once, it didn't work out. It didn't work out good. <laughs> right. One more for the crowd? Sure. My goodness, Chris Barnes with a Hall of Fame performance in that 10th frame. Two more to go. Good job, fellas. Let's go. And they are moving on with an impressive performance over the Brooklyn style. Just like old time. No, it's over. Well, I'm done to do now for the day. So it'll be the Adam Splitters and the Motown Muscle. And Matt O'Grady will get the last shot. And oh, that was not going to go. But the PBA League rookies, both A.J. Johnson and Matt O'Grady, certainly performed well here. Thank you, boy! So the Adam Splitters have defeated the Styles, and they're going to the semifinals. Take on the powerful Motown Muscle. The Ocean View at Falmouth PBA League Elias Cup quarterfinals are brought to you by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. By Maine Health, Northern New England's largest not-for-profit integrated health system working together so our communities are the healthiest in America. By the United States Bowling Congress, creating competitive opportunities at all levels as we build a future for the sport. Visit bowl.com for more. And by Barbasol Razors. Here's a no-brainer. Barbasol is making razors. Try the Barbasol Ultra 6 Plus today. We have two semifinals already set. Motown Muscle and the Silver Lake Adam Splitters have moved on. Now, be the kingpins and the strikers, the hitmen and the lumberjacks in quarterfinal action next Sunday. Find out on May 6 who will be the other semifinalists and see how that goes. Time for our Geico Championship recap. And match number one, LAX versus Motown Muscle. Shota gets it done. They would win game one, 233 to 194 as Simonson silence, silences the crowd. Game number two was much closer. EJ Tackett gets up in the 10th. He strikes on his full shot. Butcher has a chance. He needs a double. He gets the first hit and leaves a massive ring in seven. LAX falls 219 to 210. Then in our other quarterfinals, it was the Adam Splitters and the Brooklyn Styles. And dirty Jesper Svensson with a strike. AJ Johnson follows it up. They would win game one, 223 to 212. And then in game number two, it was all Adam Splitters. Dick Allen and company, AJ, Chris Barnes, they all got into the strike fest. They would win the second game, 257 to 205 to advance. And Kimberly Pressler is surrounded by Adam Splitters. I sure am, and they are a very happy team right now. You know, they just swept the Brooklyn style. So, Mark, why do you think that your team was able to do that? Uh, we match really well together. Uh, we have a lot of fun, first and foremost, and uh, these guys can strike. 
Yes, they can. And talking about having a lot of fun, AJ, this is the first time that you were on the PBA Leagues. We just saw you up there on that big screen having a great time. What was this experience like being in this type of atmosphere? Oh, this is awesome. Uh, you can't get a better experience than uh, Portland, Maine and what they do. And f being able to feed off the crowd just allows us to do that and get into it even more. So uh, I'm going to keep having fun and keep hopefully I keep striking like that and I can feed off this crowd. Talking about strikes, let's talk to this man right up here, Chris Barnes. Um, you were the anchor and you handled your job today. Well, I, I created opportunity where there was none there for a little while, but uh, I did clean my plate and then these guys struck every shot. we got a bunch of anchor guys on this team. I just happened to be bowling it today. It's all about cleaning your plate here at Bayside Bowl. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> All right, so that was a, two impressive performances today from Motown and from Silver Lake. So that's going to be a fun matchup. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, Silver Lake proves that they can strike with anybody in any one of these teams. So they're going to be another handful like they were just a couple of years ago when they won this. Now, out of the Motown muscle, they did not do well in the qualifying other side of the building. They come over here and they strike with a lot of power. And they seem to have that youth and tremendous rev rate on their side. Yeah, it's the other thing is all that power and all that youth. I mean, these players are so used to striking. And um, it, it, it just seems like there's no scene too big. Uh, this is the biggest one we have. And they handle it like, like, it's, like there's no pressure. So a lot of fun, a lot of um, charisma with these players, and a lot of strikes. And playing off of this crowd, too, certainly seems to inflame the players' power all the more. So, still to come with the PBA League next week. The Kingpins and the Strikers, the Hitmen and the Lumberjacks, next Sunday at 1 Eastern. And those winners will go on to the semifinals on May 6th. It should be explosive action, to say the least. So today we saw Anthony Simonson, Josh Blanchard, and the Motown Muscle. With Francois Lavoie, U.S. Open champion, dominate and move on to nothing. And the same thing for the Silver Lake Adams Splinters, moving on to nothing as well. Hope you've enjoyed this one. For Kimberly Pressler, Randy Peterson, and our entire crew, I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you for watching the PBA League.